And tonight, an undisputed football legend, Matt Letizia, a creative attacking midfielder with exceptional technical skills. His talent was God-given, hence his nickname from Southampton fans of quite literally, Le God. In a professional game where loyalty is a rare commodity, Letizia turned down many lucrative offers from top clubs to remain at Southampton for the entirety of his senior career. He was the first midfielder to score 100 goals in the Premier League and won eight caps for England, although... Anyone worth their salt in the world of football thinks it should be closer to 80. A man of principle and conviction for the entirety of his career, he brought that to his punditry at Sky Sports and as a top pundit in the news, making headlines for his vocal criticism of COVID-19 lockdowns and mask and vaccine mandates. A single-minded free thinker, he's now one of the most contentious and talked about commentators in the country. Matt Letizia, welcome to GB News. Thanks, mate. You didn't expect to take this journey, did you, into the world of current <laughs> affairs and politics and disastrous government policy? I, I have no idea how this came about, quite frankly. It wasn't the plan, uh, was it? Uh, no, I mean, I was quite happy sat on television on a Saturday afternoon, commentating on football matches and chatting about all things sport, and then the world went mental in March 2020. Well, we'll get straight to that shortly. Uh, let's talk about your incredible football career. You would be a rich man if you'd taken some of those lucrative offers. Uh, Chelsea, Spurs, many others. Why did you stay at Southampton? Uh, there were different reasons at different times, really. Um, family reasons, um, first, uh, first and foremost for the Spurs thing in, when I was 21. Um, back in 1990. Um, when Chelsea tried to buy me in 95, that was more um, for my personal happiness. Um, I was very happy at Southampton playing football the way I wanted to play it. Um, I was never one for uh, going chasing after money. Uh, that was never uh, my goal in life. I loved my football. Uh, I wanted to play it the way I wanted to play it. And I could do that at Southampton, so I chose to stay. And you always wanted to win, but you view football as an entertainment product and that fans are there to, to have a great time and to enjoy what they're watching? I've always grown up thinking that football should be an, entertain, uh, an entertainment industry. Mm. It shouldn't be about big business and making money. Um, and so for me, uh, my main objective uh, when I went out on a football pitch was, was to make sure that the people who were paid good money to come and watch the game had something to send them home with a smile on their face. So you wouldn't have wanted to, uh, to play for George Graham's Arsenal, for example? I wouldn't have enjoyed the, the boring 1-0 wins, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too right. Uh, England is, is clearly the career that got away. Out of your hands, um, having looked at your extensive and amazing story in football, it seems political rather than football-based. I think you, you turned down the advances of both Glenn Hoddle and Terry Venables uh, when they were club managers, and you paid the price for England. Yeah, I mean, I, I turned both of those down uh, at, at various times and they both went on to become England managers, you know, a couple of years after uh, I turned them down. So um, it's difficult to, to actually say that was the reason why, because they actually did pick me. You know, uh, Terry gave me a couple of starts, uh, one of which was abandoned after 27 minutes in Dublin, which um, uh, due to crowd trouble, which I, I played in. Uh, and Glenn Hoddle started me in, in one game. Um, but, yeah, I didn't get many opportunities under them, and I felt like there were times in my career when I was playing well enough to have, have been given a little bit of a run in the team. Any lingering anger or bitterness towards the FA for not having more caps? No, I don't do uh, anger, I don't do bitterness. Um, it's, that's the way my career went. I chose the decisions I did to stay at Southampton, which may have cost me uh, some England caps, but again, I have no regrets about that. Um, I, I don't, I don't do bitter, I don't do angry. Well, you've had an incredible career in football, and you're one of the icons of the Premier League, so it worked out great. How far into the pandemic was it when you realised something wasn't right? Very early. Um, from the moment the videos uh, came out of China of the people collapsing in the street, basically, that, and that was the moment when I went, that doesn't look. That doesn't look genuine, that doesn't look real. Uh, because that didn't uh, happen here when Covid arrived, did it? No, strange. It's never happened anywhere else in the world. Yet those videos were cited as you know, one of the reasons why we have to shut down the whole economy, um, ruin uh, a whole bunch of uh, people's lives from the lower and middle classes and make the uh, people at the top of the tree uh, a whole lot richer. Strange, that. It, it, it is. Well, I'm allied with you on your views about lockdowns, mask and vaccine mandates. Uh, I've certainly had pushback. I've most likely paid a price. Have you? Um, 
Uh, have I paid a price? Uh, I guess the, the price people will probably point to is uh, I lost my job. Um, Sky uh, may tell you something different. They, they, they told us that they just want to take the show in a different direction, um, but uh, they didn't deny that it had something to do with my uh, posts on social media. So um, possibly my job, um, I guess in the early days, probably my family and close friends thought I'd gone a bit mad mm. um, because uh, I was kind of going against the, the narrative um, and they, they thought that I was... Um, uh, some uh, they thought I'd had mental health issues quite frankly um, I knew that I didn't um, and thankfully I stuck to my guns and what's transpired over the last two or three years a lot of them have now come to realize that I, I wasn't mad and that I um, I was actually you know talking quite a lot of sense I wasn't right about everything but I was right about a lot of things well there's two sides to every coin of course the authorities in this country would argue that lockdowns mask mandates and the vaccine mandates saved countless lives. However, you have Sweden, who didn't have any of these uh, authoritarian measures, who boast the lowest excess deaths in Europe, dating back to 2020. How funny. Funny Strange that. Yeah. Uh, listen, by the way, I, I, I've got to ask about your health. Uh, you're unvaccinated. How did you survive the pandemic? I, I've no idea. You know, I, 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 you feel weak? I've not even seen a doctor in the last three and a half years. It's Lucky quite remarkable. Um, it, it's amazing. And if you know, I needed one, I'd probably have to wait a long time anyway. No one has explained um, to me. Look, I, I think maybe we're, possibly there could be a point of disagreement where um, I think that those vulnerable may have benefited from the jab. I still... No-one's explained to me why we had to vaccinate healthy people who did not face a mortal risk from the virus. Uh, yeah, and also no-one has uh, actually gone back in time to view what Matt Hancock said in the Houses of Parliament when he said that these uh, will be a, uh, adult-only vaccines and they're not for children, and yet they came for our children. Um, and that, for me, no, you know, people gloss over that. There's nobody at the BBC Verify going back to verify that one, is there? It made no sense. They didn't verify Joe Biden saying, if you get the vaccine, uh, you won't get COVID. Others that said you won't spread it, all of which were debunked, so-called misinformation. Yeah. Um, what would you say to those who argue that you're a conspiracy theorist, dangerous or mad? <laughs> uh, follow me round. Uh, you know, go and have a look at interviews I've done. Um, uh, I think when you go against the government narrative, uh, you will get labelled in the uh, mainstream media as all those things because they don't want people waking up to the corruption that is in our government and all around our institutions, including the one that regulates the, the TV industry, and, and that's Ofcom, who have been absolutely disgusting in the way that they've looked at this channel, um, but yet turn a blind eye to all the misinformation that comes out on people like the BBC and Sky News. Uh, Matt, we could do an hour. I want to thank you so much. It's been I'll a fascinating back. conversation. <laughs> do come back. Matt Letizier, uh, plenty of opinions. This show is all about opinions, absolutely. And by the way, let me just say that I don't really agree with Matt about Ofcom, and I, I will say that to your face. <laughs> and the reason why is because I, I, they've looked at a couple of the shows that I've done over the last couple of years in which I was very provocative and sparked a debate, and I thought they handled it very fairly. But that is just my personal experience. But, of course, Matthew is entitled to his view as well. Mark at GBnews.com. Let me know your thoughts.